Well, we will go ahead and begin. Thanks to everyone who is here. Uh, we are so glad to be together on Zoom. And I have to start by saying happy National Sandwich Day, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for joining our libraries to celebrate as only we sandwich folks can. My name is Matthew Jones, and I'm the Adult Services Coordinator at the Sandwich Public Library District in Sandwich, Illinois. And uh, today, something very special is happening, and that is for the first time, we have all three sandwich libraries from around the United States in the same virtual room, and I couldn't be more excited. Thank you to everyone who is presenting today. Um, looking forward so much to hearing from you. And a special thanks to Sandy from Massachusetts and Nancy from New Hampshire for helping to make this event possible. Over the next hour, you will get to know the stories behind the sandwiches as each library tells us about their community and their library. If there's time at the end, we will have a Q&A. So uh, if you're there online, feel free to drop questions in that Q&A feature on Zoom. And if we have time, we'll get to those. Also, if you're watching online, you could do us a huge favor by uh, typing in the chat how many people are viewing with you. That helps us to keep a good record of how many people are here today. Again, this webinar will be recorded and our libraries will be sharing it so you can uh, send this to your friends and family afterwards. Um, with all that being said, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Sandwich, Massachusetts. Hello, everybody. My name is Sandy Murray. I am one of the reference librarians here at the uh, Sandwich Public Library. And it took me a, a half a second when Matthew said Sandwich, Illinois, because I my brain just immediately thought he was going to say Sandwich, Mass. So when he didn't, I was like, oh, no, that's wrong. Oh, no, that's right for him. Um, but anyway, I thank you for having us today. I am going to talk a little bit about the history of sandwich and then I'm going to send it over to our director Joanne who will talk about a little more about the actual library itself. Um, so without further ado I will try to share my screen and we'll see how this goes. Okay here it goes. Sandwich Massachusetts was founded in 1637 and incorporated as a town in 1639. We are located on the southeast coast of Massachusetts and in the northeast corner of Barnstable County on the Cape Cod Peninsula. Originally, Sandwich was primarily an agricultural settlement perfectly suited for farming, harvesting cranberries and raising livestock due to the abundance of marshland, which produced salt hay for the animals to graze on. Today, cranberries are still harvested Massachusetts is the second most productive cranberry state in the United States, growing over 100,000 tons of the fruit annually. Agriculture remained Sandwich's chief industry until 1825, when Deming Jarvis brought the Sandwich Glass Factory to town. The Glass Factory and other smaller industries changed the nature of Sandwich and brought in people from all over the world to settle here. The Glass Factory was critical in bringing railroad service to all of Cape Cod, in 1888, the glass factory closed, but Sandwich transformed itself once again to become a popular resort town. Interest in travel to the Cape helped to propel the creation of the Cape Cod Canal, which was completed in 1916. Ideally situated between Boston and New York, busy capitalists and their families found Sandwich to be the perfect summer retreat. Today, Sandwich is celebrated for its history and diversity. The town motto means after so many shipwrecks, a haven. Our town population is roughly 20,000 year-round residents and nearly doubles in the summer months. We are a desirable vacation destination featuring the Sandwich Glass Museum, the Dexter Grist Mill, which was built in 1854 and is still operational today, and the Hoxie House. Believed to have been built around 1674, the Hoxie House is one of the oldest, if not the oldest, homes on Cape Cod and is one of the oldest surviving houses in Massachusetts. We are also proud of our well-loved and historic quarter-mile boardwalk, which runs across the marsh to Cape Cod Bay. The boardwalk serves as a rite of passage for young people to jump into the ocean at high tide. It is often the backdrop to marriage proposals, high school senior pictures, and family photo shoots. Our town has numerous gift, 
and antique stores, art galleries, museums, and rare bookstores, many of which can be found in the middle of Sandwich Village on historic Main Street. The Sandwich Town Archives is housed within the Sandwich Public Library. The archives helps to make historical materials available to researchers and anyone interested in local history. We are proud to be the heart of our community. And that is the end. So I will stop sharing my screen and hopefully that all, everybody heard that okay. <laughs> and now I'll pass it on to our director, Joanne. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Joanne Lamoff, and I'm the director of the Sandwich Public Library. And huge round of applause to Sandy for that travelogue. I like want to visit Sandwich on vacation instead of just working here all the time. So I'm going to give you a um, sort of a brief history of the um, Sandwich Public Library and what we've been up to lately. We go. Um, this is our logo, as Sandy said before, we really do consider ourselves um, the heart of the community. We are smack dab in um, Sandwich Village. The Sandwich Public Library was established um, in 1890. I don't know, my slides aren't advancing. I am trying. I have to look at things. The Sandwich Public Library was established in 1890 when the Massachusetts State Legislature passed laws establishing a statewide board of library commissioners to encourage small towns to build public libraries. The first library in Sandwich shown here was housed in a tiny two room structure directly across from the town hall. You'll find out later in this presentation that history does indeed repeat itself. Enthusiasm for the public library grew exponentially with fundraisers and donations pouring in from all over town. In 1907, Sophia and William Weston bequeathed their personal fortunes for a grand total of $45,000 to their native town for the purposes of building a new public library to be known as the Weston Memorial Library. The building opened in 1909. In 1964, renowned watercolorist Dodge McKnight left a bequest of $250,000 and an addition was built shown here. Yet another wing was added in 1984. Going to the present day, in November of 2019, the town voted to fund an extensive interior renovation to the library while maintaining the original footprint and exterior. The challenge of a major renovation project during COVID was daunting with the library first closing during the pandemic, reopening under new protocols, closing again to move to a temporary location. Again, here's the history repeats itself, a two room historic schoolhouse, and then moving back to our new digs. So the photos on the left um, show we had to retrofit this historic building. Um, we had to provide some structural support to hold some library shelving. We put about 95% of our collection into storage, kept popular materials and uh, children's materials there as well. And then because we were in such close quarters and it was a pandemic, half of the staff was in the building at a time while the remaining staff work remotely with most of their responsibility working on assisting the town in COVID relief um, efforts. Here are some photos of um, our construction project. So we did, as I mentioned, a total um, a gut of the interior. So I'm gonna focus a little bit because this was such you know, a major chapter for us. Uh, show you some photos of where we ended up. So we went from sort of a dark, very high stack, sort of cluttered, cozy, well-loved building um, to become well lit and modernized. Uh, the renovation included new um, HVAC systems, LED lighting, state of the art audio visual, climate control for the Sandwich Town archives, which Sandy mentioned is housed in the library, 
a new friends book sale room and full accessibility. This is our children's room. Our project did come in um, on time, which was amazing too during COVID with all the supply chain issues that a lot of building um, projects suffered as well as tech and things like that. But <clears throat> we also restored the outdoor patio. We do some events out there. I want to um, then talk a little bit about our funding and our collaboration with um, some very close knit groups. The um, library has a nine member elected board of trustees, operating costs and salaries are funded by the town with additional funding coming from the state aid to libraries from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts and from the original Weston Fund Endowment, which is managed by three elected trustees. We are fortunate to have an active and enthusiastic friends of the library group that provide all of our programming funds, special project funding and museum passes. And these are just a couple of photos of some of the events that took place this year. We have a very robust programming schedule for library users of all ages, and we enjoy an unbelievably great collaboration with our local uh, independent bookstore, Titcom's Bookshop on Route 6A in Sandwich. And they've enabled us to host some very notable authors, included here Louise Penny, Henry Winkler, Dennis Lehane, and a number of others. The Sandwich Town Archives, as Sandy mentioned, is an active library department with visitors from all around the country. And the Sandwich Archives also has a very active friends group that provides some additional funding for digitizing newspapers and microfilm and the like. There are currently 17 staff members and the library is open six days a week, including Sundays from October through April. We are also a member of the Old Colony Library Network, a resource sharing consortium made up of 29 public and academic libraries. We are so pleased to join our fellow sandwich librarians in telling our stories. Please visit our website, like us on Facebook, and we'd love to see you in person in one of the most beautiful vacation areas of the country. And now I'm going to turn it over to Nancy, who is representing our colleagues at the Samuel H. Wentworth Library in Sandwich, New Hampshire. Take it away, Nancy. Thank you, Joanne. That was, and Sandy both. That was great to see that um, our sister town is just south of there. All those cranberries, amazing. <laughs> um, I am going to uh, provide a brief introduction to our town here in Sandwich, New Hampshire, and then I will be turning it over to Jim Mikeland, who is the director of our historical society, who's going to um, give some background on our community. Um, so let's start with introducing to what I refer to as the treasures of sandwich. Um, give me one second here. Whoops. Going backwards here. Okay. Um, as you can see here, are you seeing that now? No, we Oops, don't have right. your screen, Nancy. Got it. Thank you. Yeah. It says screen sharing has failed to start. Please try again later. Let me try it one more time. Matthew, can you address that from your hosting capacity? Yeah, let me make sure we got it open. Uh, should be good to go ahead. Go ahead and try again, see if that works. I am trying. I'm still getting the same message. Let me try from the beginning one more time. Let's see. No, it worked when we tested it earlier, Matthew, sure but I'm is. getting it now. <laughs> Give me one more second here to try. Let's go through the steps one more time. And share. All right, we got that. Yay. Excellent. 
Let's try to get it so that it's the full screen. All right. Thanks for bearing with me. Um, so this is New Hampshire. And the green square in the section, uh, center section of the map is uh, represents the boundaries of Sandwich, New Hampshire. Um, we are, as the text in this slide shows, a small community um, like Sandwich, Massachusetts. Our numbers increase in the summer, um, but our year round population is only around 1400, which is much smaller than your 20,000 uh, people in Sandwich, Mass, and your 7,000 out there in Illinois. Um, although we are small in numbers, we are uh, physically very large. Um, and you can see we are located in the geographical center of the state. Um, to the north of us are the White Mountains. Uh, to the south of us, and you can see on the map, the large blue bodies of water, the largest of which is Lake Winnipesaukee. It's kind of a definitive landmark um, for uh, New Hampshire and a major tourist destination. Um, but also that blue body of water that bleeds into the bottom left or the southwest corner of uh, the Sandwich town is Squam Lake. Um, it's claim to fame. Those of a certain generation may remember the film with Catherine Hepburn and uh, Henry Fonda on Golden Pond, which was filmed there, um, brought Squam Lake um, uh, into the onto the radar of a number of people. Um, if you ever want to visit us, from those of you from far away, I've put the our geographical location um, relative, how far you'll need to travel to get from your relative sandwich communities. This is what I consider our uh, backyard. This is the northern part of town, um, the mountains, uh, the White Mountains. Um, and the range that you see in the back uh, of the picture in the horizon is the actual sandwich range um, that is part of the White Mountains. As you can see, there's not a lot of people here in our backyard. And this is what I consider our front yard, our Squam Lake, um, a uh, tourist destination, remarkably undeveloped. It's a beautiful, beautiful um, lake that we are blessed to have in our yard and has served as an inspiration um, for artists um, throughout the years. Uh, this is looking across the lake, looking north into our backyard. <clears throat> we share our community with lots of uh, four-legged creatures, so two-winged creatures. Um, it's not uncommon for us to um, go out into our yards and see bears or bobcats or moose. Um, and we have the iconic loon on uh, Squam Lake. Uh, this is our village. Um, the center sandwich is at what we refer to it as. It is a historic, um, a large portion of it is designated as a historic, um, help me out, Jim, district. a historic district. Um, it's kind of an iconic New England village with a number of old uh, homes in it. In the far left corner, you can just make out the shore of Squam Lake and some of those mountains that I was referring to that are in our backyard. Um, this, if you would like to see more uh, images um, from our town, I'm gonna put a shameless plug in here. Uh, you could visit uh, discoversandwich.com. There's a wonderful um, uh, pages filled with images um, that capture the beauty of our community. Along with the geography of our town, I think one of the defining characteristics is the history. Um, you mentioned that down in Sandwich, Massachusetts. We're in New England. History is everywhere. Um, it is not only in our downtown area, um, but if you travel the back roads around Sandwich, you will um, come across numerous um, sign markers such as this one um, that marks uh, a covered bridge um, that is, I think, probably on our east side of our town more, the Durgan Bridge. Um, 
we share, along with Sandwich, Massachusetts, a strong Quaker um, tradition. This is uh, the Quaker Meeting House that's, again, on one of our back roads and still in operation. Um, our historical society is very active. We have a museum um, building and the Transportation Museum, which is where the uh, Concord coach that you see up in the upper right is housed. So we bring it out at least once a year for the parade uh, during Columbus Day. And um, you might come across uh, a figure like this statue, which was recently um, rehabilitated and put um, outside one of the historic buildings in our community. Uh, another characteristic I think that defines the sandwich of New Hampshire is our long tradition of um, craftsmen and artisans. We don't have a glass factory. Um, we do have sandwich home industries, um, which as you can see from the sign was um, founded in 1926 and led to the development of an infrastructure, um, the League of New Hampshire Craftsmen, which is uh, spread throughout the state of New Hampshire and serves to promote um, fine uh, crafts um, that are generated within the state. Um, two examples um, that are from our, our town right here, some pottery from a local uh, potter and um, our tap and chairs, which are um, sold internationally, um, made by a tap and chair factory. And then our fourth, I think, defining characteristic of sandwich is our agricultural fair, the three-day uh, sandwich fair has been happening for over 100 years. Um, it happens every 4th of July, uh, 4th of July, uh, Columbus Day weekend in October, um, can bring up to 35,000 people into our community over the course of those three days. So we get to experience um, big city living for a brief period. Um, as I said, it is an agricultural fair. So its focus um, is to feature the animals and produce because we are still very much uh, an agrarian um, area uh, in many ways. There's quite a few farms here, um, but there is of course the Midway and more fried foods than you could eat in a lifetime <laughs> on offer here <laughs> every uh, October. And then our fifth, uh, treasure um, is our library building itself. Um, this is the Samuel H. Wentworth Library Building. Um, this is the original uh, part of the building, the, the front part of the building that was built in 1912. Um, the money to build the building was um, given to the town by Samuel H. Wentworth, um, who uh, put the stipulation in the bequest that um, the building would have to be built as fireproof as possible. So while most New England towns, when you drive through, you'll see clabbered wooden buildings, um, our library building is somewhat unique for our area in that you can see the stone uh, walls, and um, which is from our local granite, of which we have plenty, and our uh, clay tile roof, not terribly practical for New England, but certainly fireproof, um, and proved um, prescient on the part of Samuel Wentworth um, as, oh, I think a decade or two later, um, a large portion of our downtown area burned in the great fire um, of downtown uh, Sandwich. If you look at the gable in the front, um, those of you from Sandwich, Massachusetts, and maybe from Illinois might recognize, up at the top um, is a familiar coat of arms. Um, it, uh, the building was built by an architect, um, uh, a gentleman named Mr. Coolidge, who worked for an architectural firm in Boston and was a uh, summertime seasonal resident here. And um, he uh, had the uh, inclusion of the coat of arms from, it's a, a replica of the coat of arms from the town of Sandwich, England, um, which I guess indirectly all of us can trace our name back to. Um, 
I'll read you something quickly uh, that a local historian wrote about the uh, <clears throat> Sandwich England. Um, it was one of five towns known as the Sink Ports. They were designated in 1855 by Henry II to maintain ships ready for the crown. So there you can see the three trip ship bodies um, in as part of it. Um, the uh, lions that are on the left side of the coat of arms are associated with the coat of arms of King Richard the Lionheart, who supposedly landed in Sandwich, um, England in 1194 after returning from the Crusades. Now, Sandwich, Massachusetts, you seem to have a little bit of history of change with your seal. You can see echoes of this uh, uh, coat of arms in your town seal, but it has evolved uh, in your to your own unique emblem down there. I've included it in the lower right. Um, also on our library building, the image on the upper right is the coat of arms of the Wentworth family. Um, I know you and uh, Sandwich, Illinois must have one or two Wentworth uh, places, place names in your um, community. Um, uh, the coat of arms is represented by the leopards um, and the chevron band, um, which traces back to England um, and ties into both Samuel Wentworth, who um, donated the money um, for our library, but also Long John Wentworth, who was Samuel's brother, who um, is acknowledged in one of our historical markers on the outskirts of town. Um, there's a close up of what is said on that marker. Um, Long John uh, was the older sibling of Samuel, um, who made his way out west and um, is considered, I believe, one of the founding um, or integral founding members of the town of Sandwich, uh, Illinois. And I will let Jim Mikeland take a, from, over from there to talk a little bit more about our history and how uh, John Long John Wentworth ended up um, influencing the development of Sandwich, Illinois. So there you go, Jim. There we go. Hi there. Uh, I am Jim Michael. I'm the director of the Sandwich Historical Society here in New Hampshire. Uh, Sandwich, the town, was granted by a royal grant in 1763. Uh, they started actually settling the town around 1767, 1768. And uh, contrary to looking at the mountains uh, that Nancy had the pictures of, to start with, Sandwich became a large thriving farm community. And the height of population in Sandwich was 1830. And there were about 27 or 2,800 people in town. It was one of the biggest towns in the state. And then uh, the settlement of the West began. The Black Hawk War was over. Land became cheap. And uh, people from Sandwich heard about, you could plow all day out in Illinois and Indiana and Ohio and never hit a rock. So a couple of families went out to take a look around. And in uh, about 1834, 35, uh, a couple of families moved out and settled near Dixon, Illinois. Uh, later on, there was a much larger migration from Sandwich out to Illinois uh, in 1855. And at that point, Long John Wentworth uh, was a congressman representing the area and uh, railroads were going hither and yon, growing like Topsy. And uh, there was a little town in DeKalb County, Illinois called Newark Station that wanted to get a post office. And they, local people wrote a letter to Congressman Wentworth saying they would appreciate his assistance. And nothing comes free. Long John wrote back and said, 
I'd be happy to help you get a post office, but you have to name it after the little town that I come from in, San in New Hampshire, Sandwich. Uh, so that's how Sandwich, Illinois became Sandwich, Illinois, uh, because of a political deal. <laughs> uh, as Nancy said, Sandwich, New Hampshire uh, was an agricultural town like most New England towns. And then they discovered towards the end of the 19th century that there was money to be made in tourists. And people started opening up their homes to summer tourists that would come up for weeks or months at a time. Uh, and Sandwich became uh, a tourist town. And also it attracted artists and artisans. Uh, the League of New Hampshire Craftsmen is noted uh, nationally as, as, a, as one of the first arts and crafts groups to be organized. And it was founded by uh, Mary Coolidge, who was the wife of Jay Randolph, who designed the library. And the League can actually trace its roots back to the library building itself. In 1926, they had an ex exhibition of rugs upstairs in the library. And that was the start of people thinking, well, what can we do to monetize this? And uh, the start of the sandwich home industries and the League of New Hampshire Craftsmen. Uh, today, we have around 14 or 1500 people in town. It's a pretty idyllic place. People always call it a classic New England village. And <clears throat> if you wanna take another look at sandwich in a different way, you can go on YouTube and look for uh, the opening credits to the New Heart show. He was the innkeeper in Vermont. And that whole opening credits for New Heart is sandwich. Uh, those were B real shots when they filmed on Golden Pond in 1980 down on Squam Lake. And they needed shots of the countryside. And a little later on, when the New Heart show came along, they called over to the uh, film library in. in Los Angeles and said, send us what you got on New England, small towns. So that first shot of New Heart is that classic view coming into the village of Center Sandwich. And then all of the shots after that are pretty much all in Sandwich. So if you get a chance, you should go on and take a look at that. Uh, the Historical Society itself was founded in 1917. Uh, so we're celebrating our 105th anniversary. Uh, we started out early on printing excursion booklets that covered all the areas in town. And they grasped at the last possible second, a lot of the older people who had institutional memory of people who lived well back into the 19th century and even back into the 18th century. And these booklets this year was the 103rd uh, anniversary of the 103rd ex excursion booklet, uh, covered all areas of town and they have proved an invaluable resource for researchers trying to track down genealogy and uh, family history and buildings and whatnot. So we're very proud of that, we're very active. Uh, the library is our great friend and uh, it works the other way. We try to help each other out. Samuel H was definitely the brother of Long John. So we do have a tie to Sandwich, Illinois. I'll turn it over to you, Matthew. Well, thank you so much. I feel like I have some road trips to take now. Um, how exciting. This is great. Um, I'm going to uh, take a moment and get my screen to share here, and I'll have some pictures to show you. All right. Well, welcome to Sandwich, Illinois, and it's been great to learn about our other communities and libraries. And I'm gonna start uh, now by just taking you on a very brief tour of our town. Maybe some of the places I would drive by with you if we were driving around town on your first visit. The first place we'd have to go and talk about is the Sandwich Fair. Fun to hear about uh, your fair there in New Hampshire. And you're gonna hear a little bit more about our fair uh, in just a few moments. Um, but uh, here's a picture of our sign and the fair at night. And uh, that's a very exciting time. One of the things that we're known best for in the area is, is our fair. 
Um, we'd also stop probably for lunch at the Bull Moose Bar and Grill. Uh, this is a great historic place in town um, made out of a train car and uh, Feel free to look that up online, or if you're ever coming through, this is uh, my place uh, I would recommend to stop and eat really, really beautiful. And um, uh, there's a, that's maybe where we would stop and get a bite to eat. And then we might uh, even take a show in at the Opera House. Um, and here's a picture of uh, from the past and from current present day, which also functions as our city hall with offices in there but um still uh has shows regularly and you can stop in and see um some beautiful uh architecture and uh, a great show uh, and of course then we'd have to stop by the library right um this is a picture of one of our previous libraries there on the left and then our current library building um which you will probably hear about a little bit later from our director um built in 2014. We've been there ever since. And um, here's what you would see if you walked into our library, our circulation desk. Here's a picture from a recent program that we held. And so we, uh, we do love our library and our community. And uh, so now I get to introduce to you Joan Hardikoff, who is the treasurer of our historical society, society here in Sandwich, Illinois. So uh, Joan, come on over. She's going to join me right here, and Joan is going to share for the next few minutes about the history of our town. I also have to say, before you begin, that Joan was also one of our guests on the first season of our podcast. So speaking of shameless plugs, if you want to learn more about Sandwich, Illinois, uh, you can find our podcast uh, wherever you get your podcast. It's called Sandwiched Between the Books, and we had a three-part special um, that uh, outlined the history of our fair and the current uh, happenings of the fair. And Joan came and did a history. So you can hear more from her if, you, if you'd like to learn more there. Joan, take it away. Thank you. Uh, yes, I'm historian in the area as well as the fair historian. Um, our town is not quite as old as you in the East. Um, Actually, like 1853 is when uh, Long John got the railroad to come through. And so that's when we really started. Uh, there was a man that owned a lot of land here called Almond Gage. He gave free lots to those that would build. And the depot for the railroad was one of those uh, first buildings. Uh, yes, Long John Wentworth. Yes, I have the same story that you do. Uh, he was a six foot six inch man, a big man, about 300 pounds. He was a six term U.S. congressman. He was also mayor of Chicago. And so, um, and one of the things that he did is really notable. The uh, line from Wisconsin to Illinois was quite a bit farther south and would have included Chicago in Wisconsin had he not helped get that line moved north where it is now, uh, which Chicago is in Illinois, right on the lake. Uh, we started, we're a rural community uh, and started out in the 1850s uh, as um, a farm, our land here is, is pretty flat. We don't have mountains in the background and things like you do, not so scenic, but uh, it's very farmable ground. And so that led to some of the first in the whole county uh, needing farm equipment. And so we had a, a manufacturer called Sandwich Manufacturing Company in 1856 that started making uh, corn shellers, uh, all kinds of farm things. And then one in the 1870s called the Enterprise Company that um, made uh, windmills and other manure spreaders and all kinds of other farm equipment. Uh, uh, Enterprise was eventually sold to sandwich manufacturing. And then later on in the night, about 1930, a uh, new idea from Ohio came in and um, bought out sandwich manufacturing. Uh, our fair, yes. Um, we actually, the first fair started in 1858 and went to the 1880s. And it was called something else earlier. 
And actually the proper legal name now probably is the Cal County Fair at Sandwich, Illinois, but a lot of especially local people just call it the Sandwich Fair. It's a five day event, uh, the Wednesday after Labor Day through Sunday. And we have usually at least 170,000 people from in those five days. Um, so um, it, it started, it went to the 1880s, early 80s, and then it started again in 1888. And the only re, uh, year that we've not had a fair is the pandemic two years ago. So we were continuous uh, from 1888 until 2020. Uh, and it has about 200 acres in the fairgrounds. It's right outside of town. And, um, it, and it is noted for, uh, we're noted all around Chicago. We have a lot of uh, suburban Chicago people that come out to that, especially on weekends. Uh, we're pretty much a bedroom community now. Um, we've got larger towns around us, uh, Aurora, DeKalb, um, Ottawa, uh, that people commute to, to work, or even Chicago. We don't have a train that stops here at the present time, but not too far away, they can get the train. Uh, the population is about 7,200 at the last census. And one of the, um, one of the things we're kind of noted for are antique shops. It's kind of evolved to that. Uh, we have a number of nice antique shops. We have uh, kind of an antique show several months during the summertime. Uh, we've got six schools plus a vocational school that serves several towns around. We've got some fast food restaurants. Um, I'm involved in the museum. We have a three-story, four-floor uh, stone mill museum that was originally a steam grist mill. We're only open uh, from April through October on Sundays, but it's run by all volunteers and, and it's a very nice facility. We have a hospital, uh, small, smaller, but, uh, and then as Matt said earlier, the uh, Opera House City Hall is one of our very nice buildings too. The Bull Moose, he didn't um, elaborate on a little bit, but, uh, it was used in Teddy Roosevelt's Bull Moose campaign when he was running for president. So it's kind of a claim to fame type thing um, and, and a nice little place to eat too. I think that pretty much brings us up to date on kind of a little bit of the history of, of Sandwich. Well, thank you very much, Joan. And uh, I now get to introduce two very special ladies that play a big uh, role in making our library what it is today. Uh, this is Jane Wolf and Emily Assel. Jane is a longtime board member and currently serves as the president of our board of trustees. And Emily is new to the board this year. And so I've asked them to come and they're each going to share uh, some thoughts on this day as we celebrate National Sandwich, Sandwich Day. Jane? Okay. Well, hey, everybody. Um, I, as Matthew said, I've, I've been involved with uh, community actually for over 50 years. And my involvement with the library actually started around that time as well. Uh, I would bring our children to the uh, old library that Matt showed a picture of earlier. Um, we would go to story hours and uh, we became very, you know, uh, uh, it was very important to us to have a library in town. We, you know, for those people that don't have necessarily a whole lot of money, um, we have all found, I think, over the years in our commitments to libraries that we are here to serve everyone, but it's particularly important when we've got families that need library services. And so we, we took advantage of that. Uh, over those years. Um, I became officially involved with the library, though, when I retired and decided that I wanted to become involved with the board. Uh, that actually started when we were running a referendum or getting ready to run a referendum for the um, building of this building. And so I got involved with the library. I got on a committee to um, help with the referendum. 
And I'm very proud to say that that referendum passed in our community with the support of our community members with a resounding yes. And that is why we have this beautiful building today. And so I'm happy to say that we were able to move in in 2016 and um, the building itself is truly a treasure for our community. Um, one of the things that as I was thinking about what I wanted to say today was um, to mention that our mission at the library, really um, one of our mission statement um, keywords is community. And I think that especially in this day and age of digital, um, all so much digital that having a community hub where we can offer community programming, community services is particularly uh, special. And I, I really am proud of our staff, our library director, who have been um, working towards making this a community hub. As we speak, we have early voting here in our building. And uh, so I know that Barbara's probably gonna talk about some of our services here, but you know, as you walk in and you see early voting happening in one, in one part of the building, and uh, patrons coming in and taking advantage of the, you know, the, the books uh, that we have here and the computers and the services that we offer. And then you've got sandwiches uh, being served in another part of the building. We are truly, I think, serving our purpose of being a community hub. So I really want to give a kind of a online thank you to our staff and um, for all that they've done to help uh, continue to make this into a community hub. Um, I also want to invite you all to take a road trip and come to the mid through the Midwest um, and and stop by Sandwich uh, and visit us. Uh, many of you probably are familiar with Route 66, and we are uh, right within that area. And for those of you old enough to remember the the phrase, get your kicks on Route 66. Um, this is an opportunity for you to take a road trip, stop by, see us and say hi. Once again, thank you for this programming to my staff, to our staff, and a thank you to all of you out there in all the sandwiches in the United States. Thank you, Jane. And now uh, Emily is going to come and share a few thoughts as well. Hi. Hi. So as I said, my name is Emily Assel. I am a mom in the community. I am a trustee member. I'm also a local author. So I have a lot of different perspectives on the Sandwich Library. But as you've probably heard already from so many of our presenters, I am so excited to be part of a library that really is so ingrained in the community. Uh, when I first came here, we were a part of it. And what impressed me the most is that this library wasn't just a place to come and check out books, but it really was involved in the community. And some of the things that they've already highlighted, and I'm sure Barb will talk to us more about, but this summer, uh, actually starting last summer, we even started giving away meals to school children during the summer. We have reached out and as they talked about early voting and also being able to get people into the library through renewing license plate stickers. Um, we have seen lawyers come and study for their bars here. We have also, as an author, um, I've written parts of my books from this library that there's always been a spot for the community to gather. Even now, as we're talking, there are plans in place to find places for the community to be able to come and say, we need a gathering room, we need a place for our community to come and be able to gather for free and talk about different things that are going on in our lives. Uh, we are a smaller town, but I am so proud of the fact that our library includes everyone. There is a place for everyone here. Um, there has even been a lot of outreach and I'm excited when I come to the library and I see a whole area set aside just for our teenagers and communities. And they'll come here after school to a great place that's safe, that they can find education, that they can find acceptance to come and gather here in a place that is very much off limits even to the adults in the area. Um, but they want to come and they want to be a part of it. And as we keep bringing more life and community in, we become and have become so much more than a place that's just got books. But there's the electronic books, there's resources for voting. Um, 
we are offering technology classes um, both to the older generation and even to some of the younger generations here. We're renting out um, wattage detectors, which I think is so crazy that I don't have to go to the buy, go to the store and buy one. I can come here and rent it. Um, again and again, we've got um, Matthew works with our local movie theater to talk about. I mean, movies and libraries. How do they work together? It's because we're not just a paper book library. We're a place for our whole community to gather and really not just gather, but to get get to know each other better. And I can say, this is my story. What's your story? How can we work together to build a community where everyone is accepted and loved? And we become so much more than just, as we said, a library, a place with paper books, but a place that we can be a resource for all different things in the community. Um, and I think that's what I'm really most excited about um, is all of the different things that we're seeing, um, even working with our different high schools and elementary schools and trade schools in the area. So that's why I am proud of our community. I'm so excited to see what we have going on next and all of the things that we continue to do here. So thank you for your time. I've been so wonderfully impressed to hear about all of your libraries and all of your communities and you guys inspire us and hopefully we do the same uh, to continue doing what we do so well and reaching out to our communities as well. Thank you, Emily. Thank you. And lastly, from Sandwich, Illinois, I get to introduce to you our wonderful library board, uh, library director, and this is Barb Posinger, and she's going to share a little bit more about our library. Welcome, Barb. Hello, hello everybody. It is my absolute pleasure to be here today. Thank you all for joining in and tuning in and just having a massive love fest about our sandwich libraries all across the United States. And it's been such such a like an amazing experience to be able to break some of these boundaries that we always seem like we're in, in terms of, you know, reaching out to other libraries, collaborating and seeing just how far we can stretch the limits of what we think that we can do as libraries. Because one of the best things about libraries, and this goes for all of them, is that we can, all you got to do is dream. All you got to do is dream, and then you'll be able to figure out how to make something happen. It doesn't matter if you're small. It doesn't matter if you're big. You can work together and figure out how to provide the all different sorts of things for your community that they may be missing elsewhere. And so it's never boring, let me tell you. <laughs> all right, so just a little bit about myself. Um, Matt introduced me. I am Barbara Postinger, and I'm the director at Sandwich, Illinois Library. I've been the director for just about three years now, but I've been here for a total of eight. I started off as the reference and reader services librarian here, and I held that position for five years right after grad school. And then I was very lovingly and I was very excited to be able to have the experience to become the director here and see all the different places that we could go. Um, I've just got to say like, we are a smaller library. We serve a population of about 7,200, as Joan had mentioned. And, you know, it's just, it's it's really become a home for me. I, I grew up closer to the city. Sandwich was about an hour and a half from where I lived. I lived around the Schomburg area, which some people may know and others probably have no idea what that means. But um, I, I got this job and just working in a small town community, there were so many blessings and benefits that I never even really pictured could happen until I achieved them and got to see them in action here. And one of those things is all the different hats we get to wear. Like we get to explore so many different avenues as part of the library and try so many different things. Like our job doesn't keep us in one spot. It allows us to think outside the box and work together to figure out all solutions to problems and new innovative things to bring to the library. So um, just to give a little bit of history on our library, it actually started off as a dream by the Sandwich Women's Club in 1898. And they just started in a little club room that had a collection of 150 books. That's it, 150 books, can you imagine? And then eventually over time, they start to grow and progress. And in 1913, they became a little larger and needed to expand their collection. So they rented a one room cement block building for $10 a month. Oh, I miss them. Like, <laughs> I speak as if I was there, but those days would have been nice. Um, and they were only open for about three afternoons a week. Fast forward to 1925. 
and the community passed a petition to become an official township recognized public library. The very first librarian here's name was Polly Newton, and she's kind of exciting because she had the best library assistant that there could possibly be, which was her dog, Skipper. <laughs> so he's kind of a great mascot for us. Um, and then in 1940, we have some sad history <laughs> where we grew and grew and grew to have 10,000 volumes and lost them all in a fire. So yes, fires are not libraries friends ever. Um, make sure, do what you can to protect, build stone walls, just like in New Hampshire. <laughs> uh, do yourself a favor and do that. Um, but remarkably, a new library was built pretty close after that. I believe it was one year later. Um, we converted to a district in 1996 and continued to grow. And then I believe as Jane had mentioned, in 2012, the library passed that referendum to get us this new beautiful building. And we opened in fall of 2014 and have been here ever since continuing to grow. So um, that's a little bit about our history. And I was lucky enough to come on board within that first year. I signed on April of 2015. And so, I just want to end with sharing some thoughts about why I feel this library is so extremely special. And when I was thinking about this, it really comes down to a threefold answer. And number one, it's my staff and board. This place could not be as exceptional as it is without these people running it. The most wonderful thing about it is all of us share the same vision and share the same mission for our library and it makes it so easy to seemingly exponentially grow and expand and test those limits to see how far we can go and without them I, I don't know where we'd be where everybody here is very unique coming up with new ideas and programs like Matthew, I wanna give a shout out to him because he comes up with all these ideas from bringing bats into the library to mayoral candidate forums to you know bring in the public to talk about that and educate everybody. And so, you know, everybody's creative and we're so supportive of each other. We work as a team, it, fe it feels like a family. And I think that is something kind of unique to libraries because sharing the same passion will do that. It's never work. You know, it's always you're coming in and actually enjoying what you're doing every single day and being able to see that progress is just extraordinary. Um, and then number two, all of the unique services we get to provide. So thank you, Emily, for like shouting out all the wonderful things that we do here. And, you know, it's 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 wonderful. We are a community of 7000 people, but not all of those people have library cards. And so it's our mission to educate our community on letting them know what we can offer them. Because a lot of people still do think that all we are is a research facility or we just you come here to check out books, but we have expanded. We are a community center. We offer so many more things than that. Early voting, as Jane mentioned, license plate renewals, as Emily mentioned. We also do homebound delivery. So if you're looking for resources but can't make it to the library, we will bring that to you. Um, we offer career online high school classes. So if you, if anybody in our community has not graduated with a high school diploma, but wants to pursue more education, they can come here and sign up for that program for free. We have scholarships and it's, and it's not a GED, it's a legit high school diploma. So we offer that as a service to our community. We also offer ways to explore the state. So we have museum adventure passes and explore more Illinois, which also offers free and or discounted tickets to various places all around the state. And, you know, we're always doing and trying so many new things and some things work, some things don't. You learn, you adapt, you grow. And so number three, that leaves me to community. A library doesn't serve a purpose without their community. They are the heart of everything we are and everything we aim to achieve. And we wanna be there for our patrons in every way we possibly can be. So if you notice that there's a gap in your library or a service that you're missing that you can't find anywhere, go in and talk to your library because I can guarantee you they're gonna to wanna to try to help you find those answers and get you those services if they possibly can. And so I just, I feel like this has been a massive love fest for my library <laughs> and I really appreciate you taking the time to be here with us and all of the other sandwich libraries. Thank you for joining in. It's so nice to finally get to see you and like kind of 
virtually meet you over this event. And lastly, I just want to give a big, 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 big shout out of thanks to Matthew for being creative enough to come up with this event and break those boundaries and make our tiny little library something nationally known. So thank you, Matt. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, and thank you everyone uh, who presented today. Uh, fascinating to learn about your communities and your libraries. Uh, what a real joy. Um, it was great to get to put some uh, faces with names with our colleagues at the libraries. And I was telling folks before we began that um, in some ways I feel like I have known all of you because, uh, or at least about your library, because we often get phone calls for one another. Um, and so that's, uh, it's not the first time we've talked. We always uh, have to end up calling and asking about a program that's happening in New Hampshire or Massachusetts. And so um, thank you so much. Uh, that is the hour and I don't see any questions in the Q&A. Um, so we'll go ahead and wrap it up there. But uh, thank you everyone for participating again. Thank you, Sandy and Nancy, for helping to organize this event. Uh, it was great to be together. Thank you, Matthew. Good to meet you all. And uh, we'll continue to take your phone calls. <laughs> <laughs> excellent, excellent. Thanks to everyone who attended. And uh, go to your library today if you can. All right, we'll see you soon. All right. Bye-bye.